The two of you got to hold down power rankings all on your own next week. Oh, fuck. I don't want to do power <laughs> rankings with Kyle. I don't want to do numbers with Kyle. <laughs> I mean, you can always like, move fuck it away. Second ring of hell. Or the third. I don't know. I don't do math. <laughs> Episode 387 of the TV Dudes. Big Nick Energy. This week, Randy and Les are out, and it's just us playing some Kyle Ketchup. As well as whatever else ends up happening during this runaway train that we're doing. Especially talking shows I'm sure they didn't want to talk about it and specifically pushed off till next week. So we didn't talk, we wouldn't talk about it without them. Yeah, we're talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Fuck you, Randy. Yes! You saved that too. Because I didn't ask you before the show, but in my head I'm like, we can just pick a, we can have a little slice of cake. There's still going to be cake left over for next What's week. What's he going to do? <laughs> Go back That's in the true. past and stop us? <laughs> well, we'll definitely know if he's listening or not. Plus, he never just for specifically forbade us from doing it. So, <laughs> but before we get to all that, I'm Nick. I'm Kyle, and we're the TV dudes. <laughs> we're the TV dudes. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, I feel the big Nick energy. I thought it was gonna feel weird. I thought it was gonna be like awkward without the other two here. But honestly, I feel mm -hmm. more alive than I have ever felt on this podcast. I had a, I had a whole thing of like uh uh. When we were about to do like a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Game show thing of like, okay. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll make the show called Big Nick Energy with like uh, uh, some of the game show elements that I was going to have. And then, oh. but then we ended up scrapping that. And then it was like, okay, power rankings. This is this week. I'll go <laughs> like, because last week I, I, I rated a bunch of shows really high. A bunch of shows had some Big Nick Energy. So I was going to work it in. And then that got scrapped like five minutes before we started recording. And then I'm like, I'm not coming up with another title. So it's just Big Nick Energy. <laughs> Dude, that's a great title. And it's like they said with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The only thing that didn't change about that movie was the title. <laughs> right. Oh, man. No, I'm, I'm kind of excited to do a little catch up. I've had a little hectic few weeks with uh, the baby and I started a new job. And just got all this life stuff. Actually, not podcast related, but I spent this weekend puking my guts up. Like, I don't know if I got a stomach bug or what, but yeah, I went like 12 hours uh, having to like sip the Gatorade. But uh, man, no, I'm back from the dead. Also, that was good TV watching time. So, you know, you know, you got to get it in when you can when you, get, when you got a baby. Sure. Well, I, like, like we said, uh, since we spent a week where you wa watched the wrong shows, for as it's only appropriate oh, that you that. miss the show where you where you watched all of the all the shows for for that I forget which week that was but that was so heartbreaking too because it's literally like 30 minutes before the show and i'm me and my wife we got baby stuff going on and it's like i'm looking at the clock and i'm like thinking how long this is going to take and you get to that point where you're like I got to text the guys. <laughs> and then it's like, but I watched all the shows. Yeah. I always get that too of like canceling on a group, uh, canceling on a group of friends when you don't want to cancel, but then like you want to keep it open. Like the, but maybe I can make it. But so you wait until like, okay, well, if, honestly, uh, in my heart, I knew three hours beforehand that I was not going to make this, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I almost jumped on for Patreon. There was part of me that like was ready by then, and I was like, maybe I should just do it. <laughs> I forgot what we People did for Patreon. Uh, I know it was Chip and Dale last week, but oh yeah, I didn't get to. Oh, didn't get hey, to talk about Kyle that. Hey, it's Kyle Ketchup this week, Kyle, my man. That's, That's all. True. That's all we're fucking doing today. Yeah, let's let's first uh, get off with TV Diaries. The Diaries of the Television Dudes, brought to you by only the finest. Cocaine wine. I will go first, and then you will go, and then the show will be over. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what we're doing today. Well, I kind of have like my TV diaries, but then like I don't know. I I feel like we got like three shows, and then our dessert. We can we can hit this format. Sure. Yeah. Oh boy. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna start dessert before any of the TV dudes talking Obi Wan the first two eps. That's what we're doing. 
Oh, the teaser. We have to make our uh, thumbnail Obi-Wan as well. And it just says Big Nick Energy. I'm holding the lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> it's holding the lightsaber down like in the, uh, what's it, the space balls where it's near the, their disc, like the Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> down hanging from a Schwartz. Uh, so yeah, I kept up on the offer, Young Justice, oh. uh, which had another pretty oh, piss so poor good. episode. Uh, this mm. season's been really disappointing. It it hurts. L- Young Justice might be. It, it's not as bad as Flash, obviously, but it might <laughs> it might be my Flash of watching it way longer than it probably. Uh, if it's gonna get another season, uh, I t- <laughs> don't know because. I don't know. A lot of the stuff they're doing right now, I'm like, for lack of a better word, I'm like, well, this is just stupid. <laughs> Man, who knows what's going on there with all that discovery, you know, mumbo jumbo, whatever. Yeah. The buyout at Warner Brothers or of the DC stuff. Well, I mean, Young Justice has been production wise fucked since its inception. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that premiered on the DC universe. Or wait, is it still over there? No, it's it's uh or HBO fuck. Max now. It's on HBO Max now, but it it's one of its seasons did premiere on DC Universe. That was one of the selling points. I think season three, because mm-hmm. I think Cartoon Network or somebody had it like an actually back when you know legit like I I think people still have cable. I I honestly don't know, but <laughs> back when I still had cable, I remember like I think. Uh, the first season of of Legend of Korra came out the same year as the first season of Young Justice, and then there was four seasons of Young, of, of Legend of Korra, and then after that you started the second season of Young Justice. That's how fucked production was. Oh, yeah, like just delay after delay. That's a bummer because I feel like a lot of that early DC Universe stuff had some really good ideas, and if they would have just had the money to keep pumping it in there. Uh, maybe people would have watched. <laughs> sure. I'm curious as to what, if they didn't have the production, would they have done the time jumps? Because they do time jumps between every season. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I also watched Catwoman Hunted, which is uh, the anime kind of version of Catwoman. It was pretty, it was interesting. Hmm. Features Batwoman instead of Batman, which is kind of neat, you know, given it. Still a heaping amount of sexual tension between the cat and the bat. Just, you know, <laughs> different parts. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> and then they, they, and they fight uh, Cheetah uh, at the end of it, which is a Wonder Woman villain, but I guess they wanted to keep with the cat theme. I feel like I've seen... Did Catwoman fight uh, Cheetah in the animated series? Like, maybe one of the later seasons? Oh, man, I don't think Cheetah even showed up in the same, anything yeah. same that Catwoman did. Catwoman didn't show up in anything besides uh, a Ridge dark or batman uh or legends of the dark knight maybe because i don't think she showed up in just she didn't show up in justice league or justice league unlimited i thought maybe they had done that in like batman the animated series because was there any crossover with uh the superman bruce tim and the batman bruce tim yeah there was but i think it was mostly the flash and stuff and wonder woman didn't come in until justice league and then Justice League Unlimited brought almost everybody together, but I know that Catwoman did not show up on that. All right. Yeah, no, you are definitely the authority. It's also a trick question I do on trivias all the time, too, of like, who does Mark Hamill voice on Justice League Unlimited? Oh, because people say the Joker. Right. But it's actually... But he didn't show up on Justice League Unlimited. That was the last two seasons. The only character he voices in Justice League Unlimited is the trickster, which is fucking hilarious. (laughs) Because he was the trickster in the 90s show, and uh, currently the Flash, this was before the Flash was even a glimmer in the CW's eye. So. Nice. But, uh, yeah, the, what else did I watch? I watched, I tried to continue watching The Quest, but it really feels kind of like halfway between a LARP and a, a D&D game rather than a new Legends of the Hidden Temple like I thought it might be. Oh, that's a bummer. And then I cut up on the MST3K, the new one that is now on a separate app that you have to get. It's no longer on Netflix. Uh, oh. And it is expensive I... as fuck. Like, it's $15 for each movie to, like, wow, really? buy them. Yeah. Good. 
I uh, that's the thing though. Those uh, MST three K fans are so diehard. Mm-hmm. I have a one of my close buddies is one of those guys. I mean, he like just dropped money on a uh, what's it a Tom Servo puppet uh, that he had somebody make him. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it. I think that uh, the the Netflix show why I liked it more than any other season of MST three K was that they sped up the pacing of the jokes on it. Things were faster. And now they're back to a very slower paced kind of lackadaisical, well, you know, that makes it sound lazy, but like the pacing of the jokes is just different. Like they just let more dead time kind of, kind of accrue, not a lot, but it still just doesn't feel, I guess I'm just too used to Brooklyn nine, nine and uh, like modern comedy where it's just like, you know, 30 rock where it's just like, just, just say the lines faster, say the lines faster. <laughs> On the uh, behind the scenes for Attack the Block, uh, they are showing the scene where they all go up to uh, Nick Frost plays uh, Ron, the weed guy. Mm -hmm. They all go up to his apartment. And in between takes, uh, Nick Frost is running lines with them. And they're playing a game where all it is is they're just trying to say their lines as quick as possible. So like, I say my line, you say your line, I say my line. And and it's all like memorization. So then when they're doing it, they can have more fun with the words and not be trying so hard to like. They can do it at like half speed. Sure. Yeah. So that they can be uh, incomprehensible slower. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Get me? You you got me, bro. (laughs) Now, I don't get you. What are you you trying to say? (laughs) No, actually, that's one of those badass lines in the movie at the end where he goes, you get me. And he goes. No. <laughs> nah, don't get me, bro. Eaten up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a uh, hi hat. Wow, the the names of those people fucking oh. is awesome. You know what is one of the most brilliant things about that movie? And every time I watch it, I think of this detail and just how genius it is. But mm-hmm. like in Star Wars, when Darth Vader comes out, you hear the Imperial March. Dun 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 dun. Like great villains have great themes. And the villain of this movie, Hi Hats, is always listening to his demo tape, which is his theme. Bag. So whenever he drives in, you hear do 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 do. Yeah, you know? he's <laughs> got that. Yeah, <laughs> blah 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 blah. He's he's talking about like yeah. uh, getting a snitch or something. I yeah, I remember because yeah, he sings snitch, it to himself too. Because every time mm-hmm. he does it, I'm like, wow, what a fucking douchebag. Don't give up. Blah blah blah. Hats high, hit him with the low. If I pull the trigger, though, get bigger, though. Boom, 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 boom. Let you know, us snitch also know. interesting about that movie is that it has nothing to do with your TV diaries. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> this is mine the, uh, the Big Nick Energy. Ta-da! Awesome. Well, no, I, I promise I'm not planning on just, you know, taking over the rest of the show. Like, I have my TV diaries, and then there is, like, a little power rankings check-in we can do. Uh, well, that is really a problem of any show I'm on is that I fade into the background, you know, and don't, <laughs> I, ne- I never speak my mind enough and let like, <laughs> always letting other people <laughs> talk before me. I have heard that as an issue of mine. <laughs> cricket, cricket. Um, cause that's how crickets sound. Oh, uh, <laughs> I watched Shorzy. I sh- how could I forget? I watched Shorzy as well. I was going to ask about that. I don't see that on our calendar. Like, oh, it's got to be definitely... next week. It's on next week, I'm be- I bet you. So I think less is out next week, which would be why it's not on next week. But then I don't see it after that. It was on, it was on the schedule at some point. I know I saw it on there. But we definitely haven't, haven't already talked about it, right? Yeah, no, it, well, I, it didn't come out in, like, last until uh, uh, Friday, right? So well, how about we just do a little TV diaries Shorzy chat? Because you've seen it. I've seen it. Sure. We know Les and Randy are listening right now. They're pulling their hair out, going, You better not talk about that show. Fuck <laughs> you and your whole entire life, Randy. Well, why don't you give your balls a tug, you tit fucker? Les, you're such a fucking loser. <laughs> I only know the balls tit fucker one. <laughs> I really should have brushed up on it. I'll get that for the real episode. This is just the TV <laughs> diaries catchphrase version. <laughs> Yeah, the the Shorzy one is pretty good. Uh, they have to switch up uh, Shorzy's character so that they can make a show around him because you can't make a show out of that unbelievable asshole. Yeah. So they got to give him some redeeming qualities of, you know, going through. They give him one thing I don't really like, which is, and they try and make a joke of it as like, oh, 
He does this annoying thing where he asks you a question and then in the middle of your answering it, he goes, huh? And I'm like, ooh, that's actually just annoying. That actually isn't funny. <laughs> I actually, I actually legitimately find that infuriating and annoying. Because <laughs> that then they have to repeat half a line at, all the time. I was going to say, you know he knows a person who does that, and that's where he got it and from. And that's where he got it from. Yeah. I'll tell you, here's what I hope doesn't happen. So I've only watched two, and I definitely like the first one a lot more. Because I feel like in the first one, we've got probably like the Shorzy that we know from Letterkenny. And then at the end of the first episode, we're kind of introduced to this idea of like, oh no, you know, we're going to, what do they say, disband or like de-strap? They have some Canadian They're gonna thing fold. for Brit. Yeah, we're going to fold the team. So then it's like, you're getting oh, you're no, too Sh- British Shor- with this de-strapped or whatever the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Shorzy has to save the rec center is pretty much what it is. And as we know, Shorzy's not a save the rec center kind of guy. Well, I'm just wondering, they're a league with four teams in it. Like they're the, mm. the no show. If they fold, does the league just go away or do they just play with three fucking teams? Yeah, there's like, at least in the Mighty Ducks, there's the rich kids like on the on the nice team. And it's like, no, there's just these well, guys. Well, that's a joke they play in this one of like, it is not the sh- it is not pro, it is not pro hockey. This is senior whale shit hockey. Triple A, but whale shit nonetheless. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because uh, they like, I think they get a, a, a sponsor, a Blueberry Festival sponsor that, uh, that gets them a, a, a gym that with a full uh, workout thing, like workout bikes and everything. And she just comes up like, no one is going to fucking use this. <laughs> no one here has a work. Like, g- <laughs> let me, let's ask the gyms. Jim, when was the last time you worked out? Uh, about 2008. <laughs> High school. I don't know about, I don't know. I remember that immediately. I have to get back to you on that. Shorzy. Thanks. Jim's <laughs> the gyms are such fucking beauties. Dude. Wait, are you just quoting another line, or you just really love that character gag? Oh no, I uh, I am quoting a line, but the the gyms are a, a fun character. Are they're actually all one character? Like the the gyms are characters in a way that like like multiple man is different is is uh is a character. Like sure, there's three of them, but they're all the same dot. Do- they're all the same dude. You know, I thought I was so clever. Uh, I wrote something similar in something like three triplets, but essentially they're just one character Mm -hmm. and they are like hulking. I mean, they don't play hockey, but they could probably, they're like big dudes, but no, I love that device. Yeah. The, uh, I love that. Like, okay, well you see how we're a bit banged up here is that if we, if they're staying down, but since they're all defense, like defenders or, or goons, basically they all go at the same time. So it's Man. never they never really have to differentiate between the gyms. So they're just, <laughs> so they just like, OK, I guess you're all gym. <laughs> you know, I thought of something else random to add into this. But uh, did you have anything else you wanted to mention about Shorzy before we. Uh, no. Talk about it with the guys later. I would say that uh, it's it's short. It's six episodes. So it's it's very short, like uh, even I think shorter than I don't know. Letter Kenny. Are they eight episodes later? Kenny season, though, or I want to say. Actually, I think they've had some, I mean, probably the current ones, but I want to say they had a 12 episode season, maybe. Yeah, they were longer before. I remember there were a couple of ones that were longer, but recently they've cut down to like eight, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. And this one's only six. That has to be like the sweet spot for the financials. Do you see a lot of Camera worker in here is different. Camera work is much more dynamic in here. A lot less static shots and, and a lot more hockey type footage, uh, which is pretty pretty interesting but uh, yeah. it, it does have a, it does have a significantly different vibe uh like letter kenny feels a little more wholesome i guess as like you're watching a bunch of nicer characters and it feels like yeah you are they've changed shorzy a little bit but he's still kind of a piece of shit oh but there is one element i like that he loves this uh this reporter that comes to to report on their games or whatever and he's and he's just totally smitten with her and so his version of flirting is just like what he does chirping. It's just opposite. He's just he's just 
Compliments, 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 like. Laura Moore, let me just start by saying there is no other place I would rather be in the entire world than right here with you right now. Hey, Shorzy. Can't you see I'm just completely taken by it? Like, I've never known a feeling like this. Let's assemble. Why are we doing this here when we could be over at Seven Star Dumpling House? Like, some fucking bibimbap. How do they feel about never losing again? How do you feel about it? I don't care. Oh, you are an absolute stallion. You're a horse face. I won't rest till I get even a shoulder pat from you. That would be the most a man has got for me in a very long time, Shorzy. Have you ever been sitting across from someone just trying to have a normal conversation, fighting every urge inside yourself to just scream out, <laughs> Yeah! Shut the fuck up. Well, I've never let myself be so vulnerable with someone before. It feels amazing. You are a lot, dude. God, did I be good to you? Yeah? Oh, I'd be good to you like crazy. How good? Like you wake up in the morning? I'm right there being good to you. That's actually unsettling. How do you feel about a couple steaks and some corn on the cob? With your four roommates? Five! Apologies to Big Sexy. I'll honor you till the day I die, I swear to God. From the guy infamous for wheeling two of his friends' moms in Letterkenny. They aren't my friends, and their moms were wheeling me. I'd be so good to you. <laughs> it's like a switch. <laughs> like it's <Yeah>. charming, <laughs> but you flip it the other way. So dumb. It's like, give your balls a tug, tit fucker. <laughs> I, so I'm like, okay, so he's he's like he's like that the same uh, way of like when he expresses affection for people, it's the exact same way he expresses uh, d displeasure and just like for people. It's it's mm -hmm. funny. I, I I liked it and it's cute. It's that it's legitimately cute because she's like she's kind of into it. She's like, okay, you're you know, <laughs> it's it's kind of adorable and like he's like one of these days I'm gonna shoot my shot with you. Let's do so, this. Let's do this over next time over a bowl of miso ramen. <laughs> oh man, no, that is good stuff. Do you think this would have worked? Because obviously, this is them going to Jared Kesso. How do you say Kesso. his last name? Yeah, Kesso. 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 Um, and just being like, this this sells. We want some more of this. Sure. And then you know he pitches the spinoff idea. Do you think a raunchy comedy like Always Sunny could <laughs> support a spinoff? <laughs> Like the, uh, who are those two creepy milk drinking brothers? Uh, I'm Mick not sure. I mean, somethings? it's, it, I, I really didn't think, honestly, I didn't think Shorzy would work as well as it does. I didn't think Shorzy was a deep enough character. I'm like, okay, I, you're, I thought it was like a Captain Jack Sparrow thing of like, okay, you're focusing on the wrong part of this cast or whatever. Like you, you know, it's, you love him cause he's only in there for a couple seconds and just, chirps at people and just uh yells at funny stuff at people but you can't build a show around that but they managed to like with the the stakes of this hockey team folding i thought it was actually pretty good yeah no it's a great concept can i jump to something uh something else a little random sure the thing you were trying to get to like five minutes ago <laughs> that was yeah because you know how i got them synapses firing we could be in the middle of one thing and i'm like everybody let's talk about some I was being respectful. Look at that. I got sure. the Shorzy conversation out. Nick, let's talk about the thing I'm thinking about, though, because I'm done thinking <laughs> about your thing. I'm not. Yeah, man, that is kind of how it is. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Uh, but no, I just saw right before we got on, and I don't know why Shorzy made me think of this, but they announced that our flag means death is getting uh, season two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. I'm uh, pretty excited to hear it. It's so that to say, did you ever get back to it? I watched one more episode, and I'm still not that into it. But I, I'm still not. Uh, to did the you see, has Taika Waititi's character been introduced yet? He's been introduced. I haven't seen a whole lot of him though. Like he's he's definitely uh -huh. he's he, like he's Blackbeard. I know that, but I I think I've heard him say like two three lines. And so like because they and they're making up to be a big thing later. But I know where that story is going. You know since I. The internet spoiled it for me, so yeah. I don't know, like the the rest of it, like just doesn't. There's something that's not clicking about the comedy or something, but maybe they haven't hit the the main arc of the story, which is the relationship between uh, what's his name and uh, Blackbeard. Yeah, I read this whole thing on the internet about like you know kind of what the show means to so many people and it's almost like when you miss that like your uncle's gay or something and you're just like i got through the show and when we got there i was like wait what and then it's mm. like oh all the pieces are coming together there was all these clues like i should have known all the time what sure. the show was well no so you know as you mentioned before kind of my tv diaries are just like the stuff we're gonna do catch up with so 
I'm just going to talk about one thing that I watched this week that I think is super interesting. And I'm not even going to get into the specifics of it. I'm just going to give you like the top five fun facts you need to know about Monaco. Do you What's know what I'm Monaco? talking about? Monaco. Have you seen Iron Man 2? Yeah. With Whiplash, you know how at the beginning, Tony Stark's driving the car and, you know, Whiplash comes out and cuts the car in half. and then he gets Are you talking about that and... fucking race? It's F1. It's Monaco. You motherfucker. It's oldest races in the world. I love that you tried weekend. to ease me into it, like <laughs> trick me into it by talking about a Marvel thing. Like, do you remember <laughs> this thing that you kind of like? It was in that. <laughs> It's in how Inception works, man. I'm already another layer deep. <laughs> Monic- so that's where they have the Formula One? or, or... So it's one of the oldest races in the world, uh, and it's in Monte Carlo. Or no, the, the city is Monte Carlo. The country is Monaco. So it's the Monaco Grand Prix. And this is fascinating for a million reasons. The first one you, is... You said you'd limit it to the five. You you, yeah, you yeah. explicitly five promised million that. reasons. <laughs> I could keep down to five. Um, maybe I get a couple of uh, uh, like uh, what do they call that? Your uh, uh, honorable mentions. <laughs> I get my top five and then ten honorable. No, mentions. you're now you're Randy's <laughs> cheat sheet for his best of the year or whatever. All right, no, I can keep it to five. Um, so the most obvious thing is if you ever played a racing video game. They're either literally have the Monaco street course there, or you've seen it, but you'll know it because it's the course where half of it is lined with yachts in a harbor. And then you turn around and it's just a giant mountainside with like apartments all around it. Like it kind of looks like Tailspin the cartoon, how they had like their big, you know, Jungle Book City or whatever. Wow. Okay. So white mountain peaks and yachts. It sounded like someone was like, how I, I like this NASCAR thing, but what if we made it whiter? <laughs> well, oh, this precedes NASCAR by so much. Well, that makes more sense of like the NASCAR being the offshoot inbred cousin of, of, yeah. <laughs> of Formula One. Well, this, you know, real quick, the big difference is, is that Formula One uh, refers to the type of car that they compete with. So like in Mario Kart, you have like the CC engines. Yeah, I think you've been through this, this before is that, yeah, they all based off of the same design. Yeah, and then like Tom Cruise and his, it's a stock car, you know? They can <laughs> sure, you yeah. know, race all of them. Going back to Days of Thunder. Okay, I... I yeah! You're at least relating Remember? it to things that I have seen, so... Oh, yeah, no, I feel like I've been trying to weave the F1 conversation in, like, over the last couple seasons of TV Dudes. Oh, yeah, it's been barely noticeable. The, uh, well, once uh, Grand Tour kind of fizzled out, I, like, had to find a replacement. Uh, and, yeah, so, like, actual F1 has kind of become that. But, no, second fun fact about Monaco is because it is one of the oldest uh, courses ever, it's also a street course, so, like, they... There's not a racetrack. They close the city down and they race through the streets of the city. That's got to be safe. But because the city is so old, the cars back then were half as wide and about six feet shorter. So now the cars are so big, you can only go one car at a time, which actually means despite the yachts, all the cool white people shit, like it's one of the most boring races of the entire year. Where hardly no, nobody, actually this year, nobody passed anybody. I think last year, one person passed somebody at the very beginning. But pretty much it's like, you lined up, you're done. Wait, what is the point of the fucking race then? Exactly. There is a little bit of change up. So, well, actually. Nope, never mind. I pretend I didn't <laughs> ask, Kyle. Oh, I oh got you always get me with this of like, of... <laughs> Like, like, I ask why this certain thing exists, and then I regret immediately the question I asked. So I will give you two reasons, all right? I will give you the, the fun reason. Are these part of the five that you promised before, or are we just forgotten we're, about we're that promise? We're still on number two. We're still on number two. <laughs> so this is a, so this this is like is a subpart two of a. two. Yes, two A. Holy. The, the other ones are really, really quick. Uh... But no, the, uh, the, the exciting things about it, all right? So let's say one, like, it's just boring and nothing happens. Because the course is smaller, you actually get to see the cars go by, like, 
an extra 25 laps than you would at any other place. So if you're sitting there watching, you get to see the cars more often. So in that respect, it's kind of like a car show. But here's where it gets exciting. And this is what happened I this year. I don't believe you when you huh, say huh. this is where it gets exciting. Nothing it you've rained. said is an exciting thing. What are you talking about? Tailspin. Iron Man 2. These are all exciting things. <laughs> Stop mentioning other things. You're going to ruin the other things with this boring thing. <laughs> all right. No, the exciting part is when it rains, because when it rains, it becomes extremely difficult to navigate the tiny streets. And if you make one wrong move, you smash into the wall. And literally, this race one time, the guy who won it was in 16th place, but everybody in front of him crashed because it was raining. <laughs> All he had to do was stay on the road to win the race. So you see it on the drivers. Like they all look stressed out, like because it's so difficult and they're sliding. And we had crashes this year. I think two or three cars might have got totaled. I'm the fastest Formula One racer of this year because I'm the only one that survived. Well, and that's where this one is like, it can, you know, kind of be slow race. Like you don't necessarily win by being the fastest person. It's more who can get around the track without destroying their car. Do we talk about hyperdrive again? I miss hyperdrive. <laughs> Fun fact three. All right. This place, uh, the city of Monte Carlo, or maybe the whole country of Monaco, is like a tax-free haven, kind of like a... I don't know, the Swiss have like their banks or whatever. But essentially, this is where all F1 drivers go so they can keep their millions of dollars they make and not have to pay any taxes on it. Well, it's a tax haven. Okay. And so it's almost like a pirate town kind of in that respect. See, now you said that a uh, thing that makes it sound like it's interesting, but I bet you it isn't. Ha ha ha! All right, well, fun fact four. That all just right. sounds like a, like a, a gang of French-speaking Euro fucking trash. <laughs> You're in like, the wrong t part of town, my friend. <laughs> no, I feel like it's you wouldn't even see the people on the street because the like municipality is just so blocked off. Like homeless people can't even get here. Like I don't know. It 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 looks insane. It looks like a giant mall that is too expensive for anyone to shop. In. Well, Formula One being a, a giant money laundering scheme is makes uh, racing ma more sense to me. So. <laughs> so speaking of money laundering and sexy stuff like that, uh, actually, this doesn't have anything to do with money laundering, but uh, the Casino Royale from the James Bond novel and from the film is in Monte Carlo. So that's another like. Oh, that you're, are you done? I thought you were That's going somewhere with that. That's my fun fact. <laughs> this... Tailspin, Iron Man 2. And it does James have something Bond. to do with money laundering. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen's character is the uh, is like a money oh, yeah. holder in that. that. Was the... I, I, th mm -hmm. I think he's a launderer too, but whatever. He's like, the, like a terrorist bank. Yeah, so, and he leverages all of the, you know, Blood Diamond guy's money to like short uh, airline stock, and then James Bond saves the airline, and now... They put the squeeze on him, and all he can do is to win money at Monte Carlo and hit Bond in the balls Jesus with a Christ, how you think thing. you're the only person in the world that remembers the exact details of the plot of Casino Royale? Not anymore. Actually, I've read the book, too. You want to know the differences? No. <laughs> Never. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one, since my, my number four fun fact wasn't good enough. In the, so the book was written when men were just way misogynistic. Like we talk about a few decades ago, like so you like terrible. so like five years ago. This was 1930s misogyny, dude. Ooh, that's some good. That's some vintage. That's some good aged misogyny. <laughs> There's a scene where Vespa is kidnapped, and James Bond has to race after her in the fast car. And in the movie, he flips the car, and then he gets tortured. And afterwards, I love you, and all that stuff. That happens in the book. He gets tortured. They fall in love after. But when he's driving to get her, his dialogue in his head is, this dumb bitch, of course a broad would get kidnapped. They're always getting kidnapped. I'm driving for two more seconds and I'm turning around. She knew what she was getting into. I'm not doing this. This is BS. I'm going home. Like, 
He writes this in the book that this is what's going through Bond's head, and it's like, oops, boom, crash. Wow. The car. <laughs> well, now we know how to make the underlying commentary of that scene better. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, not modern Bond. You know, modern Bond doesn't think like that. This is 1930s Bond. I think he might have even been. Yeah, he was driving a Bentley. This was pre Aston Martin. Um, actually, a reader wrote Ian Fleming and was like, "Bentley suck. Get him an Aston," and he did it. Wow, so uh, toxic fandom was was alive and well even back then of pressure from fans. Wow, technically, yes. That is a uh, astute observation. I mean, I, I'm assuming that Shakespeare didn't like the guys with vegetables at his plays or whatever, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why did he open up plays next to, a, like, a food vendor? It feels like, feels like you were inviting that in onto yourself. <laughs> That's why you gotta have, uh, maybe it's like concessions, you know? It's like, you don't want to sit through a whole play and not have a tomato to eat. <laughs> oh, I suppose, huh. yeah, like, they didn't have popcorn back then. They were starving pores. So they mm -hmm. had rotten vegetables. It's like, well, I can eat this or throw it at the actor. Like, it provides almost equal nutrition for me, either way it happens. <laughs> well, Nick, I've got a surprise. Fun fact number five is, I only had four fun facts. That's a Nick fact right there. That's your big Nick energy rubbing off on the fun facts. Yeah, I only have the four. Kyle, I want you to take this in the best way possible. I don't know if I've ever hated you more than right <laughs> now. Your fifth fun fact is you don't have one. Fuck. That's for you. That's God. for you, Nick. That's a fun fact for you. We're going to non sequitur into something else. I'm so angry. So... God, you didn't feel satisfied with Shorzy. You don't feel you want me to talk about Monaco more. Like, <laughs> there's more tailspin comparisons. If you Gretzky's <laughs> the best Formula Shaka? One driver in the in the world, you fucking loser. <laughs> Give your balls a tug. It does feel weird saying tit fucker on this podcast. <laughs> and I've said it like six times. <laughs> um no, I mean, because I'm the Segway King, you want to segue into some power rankings? Oh, I thought you said you didn't have a, Do you have a, a, an aggregate of what do we have so far? I've got some a little fun. I thought we'd take advantage of the fact that Les and Randy aren't here. And let's go peeking through their diaries. Let's go sneak into the nightstand, pull their diary out, read all their, their innermost thoughts. Sure. You know, just see what, they, uh, <laughs> what they've got going on up there. No, I did. I pulled some lists real quick. Not... This is the same list we talked about a month ago, but I've aggregated it to be uh, Randy and Les's uh, top picks and bottom picks, which honestly, the top picks are pretty predictable. It's the same shows we've been talking about. It's Peacemaker. It's Atlanta. The After Party. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Randy's got Bust Down in his number five and then Yellow Jackets at number six. And that can't be right. Last. Oh. Randy didn't give a score for the last days of Plakonomy Gray, which has been ranked internet average 8.8. .8. So last days of Plakonomy Gray no. is actually Randy's number seven ranked show. <laughs> well, because he didn't give a rating on it? <laughs> because he didn't give a rating on it by not watching the show. Um, actually, so no, I think he, he watched it, it but he didn't like the it. Default of whatever it was. Okay. Yep. It's, it's a red number. So I guess technically his number seven would be uh, Severance, and then he got Cobra Cut. That's normal stuff. What's uh, what's weird stuff does Les have at the top of his list? Let's see. Where does Flash come in on that? Oh, actually, did we talk Flash this year? No, I guess I'm just assuming he just puts it on there in like a negative <laughs> zero. Let's just assume it's at the bottom mm -hmm. of whatever the fuck we make him watch. Funny enough. Randy and Les, they're like five through ten are identical. Uh, the only big difference on Les's is he gave uh, Pam and Tommy a pretty high score, which I really like Pam and Tommy. Um, so Pam and Tommy is his number two show. Um, yeah. yeah he loves himself is... some Sebastian Stan. He stands yeah, that for that. I made number ten on my list. Do you have your list pulled up right now? I do not. I, I do okay, know I that. I updated it for this week, and uh, one of the reasons Big Nick Energy was going to be it because I gave a bunch of shit, like some pretty high scores. I was giving eights and nines mm -hmm. out fucking 
like candy oh, yeah. last week. Legend of Vox Machina, Cobra Kai, Severance. Oh, no, I'm reading the wrong column. Sorry. Oh, that's funny. I've been reading. I am such an idiot. I was reading Randy's column on the left sheet. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so his rankings are the same. I was just looking at the wrong scores. All right. Sure. So, yeah, okay. your your rankings are um, actually kind of similar to uh, Les and Randy uh, with uh, shows like Bust Down, Yellow Jackets, Marvelous Miss Maisel. Co- Dude, yeah. Hyperdrive is your number 12 show? Hyperdrive, look, d- uh, I'm not one of those people like uh, Randy says, like he only gives one or two tens a year. I'm go. Mm-hmm. I go for what are you trying to accomplish? And could you could do I have an idea of how for you to do it better? Hyperdrive. Don't know. Like that one. I'm like, no, <laughs> what you're trying you what you what you were going for. You nailed it. One hundred percent. Even though it's not a genre of show I like, even I have to admit how entertaining and how much how how good that version of it is i may not like abstract art but i bet you i can tell when someone like the best best version of it i bet you i even i can go ooh well those are some pretty brush strokes <laughs> i don't know about the rest of this but fucking the oils on this i know i get that i mean the joke would be disney gallery the mandalorian <laughs> yeah Imagine a show like that with some real money, you know, like somebody goes on there and wrecks their car, but the show gets, I mean, if it was on Fox or something, you know, people would see that and be like, oh, I want to buy that guy a new car, see him wreck that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, like there was a little girl from another country who came over here to destroy Oh my God. That was so sad. That was (laughs) so sad. And they built it up too. They built it up to be like such a fucking gut punch of like charlie charlie's theron visited her <laughs> like <laughs> oh come on wow yeah oh gosh but yeah i uh what's it i uh barry i got it at 10 right now i don't know how to improve that show i think yeah oh i was getting into a, a big conversation about barry this week with somebody i work with we're trying mm-hmm. to figure out what genre that show is uh, I think I would say it's the same in the same realm as what physical is, which is a uncomfortable, um, dark, brutally dark comedy. Huh. Well, but we were also thinking. I, well, I guess I guess physical actually isn't all that funny, but I I, mm. I guess Barry has its its intense moments, too, with like. Barry is almost like an improv skit where it's like they write a funny joke. Oh, ha ha, this, what a funny joke. You know, this guy's a killer, but he's in an acting class. But then they go, so what are the real consequences of it? And then you have the dark humor, where it's like, okay, this guy did this thing that's ridiculous, but no, here's really what would happen if he would have, like, killed this dude's wife, you know? Or if he would have done any of the things that he did on there. Um, and, oh, man. The action stuff, too. Like, it is kind of an action show in a lot of ways. Yeah, well, when he does kill people, like he's, he, they do show him as pretty efficient in like knowing what yeah. he's doing. But I tell you what, out of the shorezy of that show, I would definitely watch a whole show with No Ho Hank. Oh hell yeah, that he would be a great uh, spinoff. And then who is the handler guy who is also in like Dodgeball and Office Space? Oh yeah, uh, fuck, what's his name? Damn, he's got a funny name too. Um, on the show, the character. But he would, uh, I think he could have his own spinoff, you know, where it's like him working with other contract killers and stuff. See, they, we call him the Raven. You see, it's, it's actually pretty <laughs> interesting because the Raven means three different things depending on what language you're using. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, found another fun little uh, diary fact picking through these things. So Randy's number seven show, The Last Days of Platonomy Gray, is actually Les's like, number one worst show. Like his least favorite show. Oh, I wasn't aware he even watched that thing. It's his least favorite show because he didn't put a score. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> so he went in and deleted his aggregate, like, internet ranking from it. Um, so, I mean, lets me know he's paying attention to the list. <laughs> sure. Sure. Let, let me see. What's the, uh, what's the bottom of the barrel yeah, I mean, it's yeah, stuff we've been I'm, talking about. I was trying to see whatever I put for last week of like uh, Made for Love. I think I put that in a nine as well of, of the same thing as ah. very, 
it not maybe not quite as good as Barry, but very similar. Uh, yeah, that's I uh, have only seen the first episode of season two, um, but season one was phenomenal. Like yeah. that's there was a show that did that really poorly. Wait, was it that Roar show? I feel like had had tried to touch on some similar concepts and just kind of fell flat. Well, Roar was kind of like the sci-fi woman women one, right? Yeah, it was like the. Where they put Black Betty Gilpin Mirror. on a shelf. Is that the one you're talking about? Yep. I actually, maybe they didn't do anything. I mean, kind of. They're, they're they're playing in in similar arenas. And the Girls Five Ever, I gave like a, a nine or whatever too, because I think that as far as like goofy, silly ah. comedy, like it's just fucking nailing it. Like it has a Kimmy Schmidt feel to it, but I think I like it even more than Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, and I would even say that. It's a fun evolution where you go from 30 Rock to Kimmy Schmidt and you you see the 30 Rock DNA all over Kimmy Schmidt. And then you go from Kimmy Schmidt to this and it's like you see that Kimmy Schmidt DNA all over it. But it's like it's one step removed from 30 Rock. Like they're not playing off those same tropes. Mm -hmm. There's not like a, you know, a powerful business person, you know, uh, who's kind of like running their lives. I mean, technically there is, but it's. It's 30 Rock has more way. of a, it, I think during its time, what was popular was a uh, broad pessimism or cynicism. And what I like about Kimmy Schmidt and Girls 5 Ever is this some sort, I think it might be the new version of like new vogue and comedy of a desperate optimism. Like fucking. Yes. Desperately taking the best out of whatever situation they're in. Like the little you know thing they ha have, like. The saddest part about that is it was the biggest pessimist on the planet who wrote those characters. Who's like, how do you go full pessimist? Oh, you got to flip to the other side you go, of the scale. You go all the way around. Like. Yeah. You don't travel back in time. You punch through time. <laughs> yeah, well, we got a, a little time left if you want to get into dessert for Obi-Wan. Well, I was, I was going to say, I have four shows planned. Or uh, technically three shows. Um, but no, I was going to throw Girls 5 Evo on there because I binged through so much of that and me and my wife have just been, I mean, that has been kind of our new show. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Man, also you're, if you want you're really in album mode, dude, so in fucking album mode. No, the other one too, if you wanted to talk about it is I've been hooked on Young Rock. Well, I have not kept up on it, but I, I did like what I saw of it and it seems like every like everyone else seems to be kind of into it. Yeah, they I mean when Rock when the Rock actually runs for president, I guess I'll go back and watch it just so I'm updated on his policies. <laughs> um, you know, I think the least interesting part of it is actually the stuff with the Rock in it, but I don't think the flashbacks work without having the actual Rock there narrating it. But man, yeah. those three younger actors who are playing him are just phenomenal. And the the, the teen, I remember history. the teen one being particularly good. Oh yeah, and it's like such a specific kind of like time in your life, you know, where you're yeah. still like you don't know what you're you want. Yeah, I'm like know. I. That's why I was impressed by him because he didn't even remind me of a rock. He reminded me like that's what I think the rock is like. As it was that like as a teenager. Mm hmm. The energy of it that he got was is was was very good. And I really like the college age rock too. The one that you've probably seen play playing football. Mm -hmm. Like, not only is are his sensibilities really fun and like a great opportunity for Rock to kind of take the, you know, make fun of himself. Uh, but that that character is now towards the end of this season, or we might be at a mid season break, but towards the end of this, he is the kind of our pathway into the modern rock. Like we mm -hmm. get to see his evolution through wrestling. Which, if you know, you watch wrestling in the '90s, it's super interesting. Well, it's always interesting with with age progression of like, <laughs> so it like it, especially that last the uh, Fast and the Furious movie of like, wait a minute, how did you grow <laughs> like f four inches after you were like twenty two? <laughs> yeah, that's not how that works. That was not John Cena at the beginning of that movie. <laughs> the real Vin Diesel had hair when he was that kid's age. <laughs> Yeah, so like the the middle, like the college age rock. I'm like, okay, I guess yeah, he would look different from his. He's 50 now. He would look different, but in a, in a way of that, 
it looks like this rock could kick the shit out of the previous rock from like the rundown or whatever. Well, yeah, that's what it is. So there was like the wrestling rock. He did a few movies and then he became like the big rock, Mm -hmm. Uh, which the biggest you will ever see him. And this is just magnificent. You seen pain and gain. Oh, I could talk forever about pain and gain. That's Michael, Michael Bay's piece de resistance of his oeuvre. That's his Todd Phillips movie. Like, oh, I love Pain and Gain. Yeah, that that I'm movie right that movie more communicates uh, a point of view of the world more successfully, and Michael Bay did than any uh, uh, Christopher Nolan movie has. Like, oh, it's like yes, oh I no, I, I oh I get it. I see. I get how you see the world. I, I totally get where you're. What? Why? that you're the only director that will actually have civilians die in car car chases because they don't matter to you because humans are garbage they're garbage people <laughs> what's the bat what's it matter if we take out a few of them during an action scene nothing god you gotta think of how many people like that exist in hollywood though like especially around all those rich filmmakers they probably see that like the cynical ones probably see a lot of it sure um, oh man do you want to you got one more show before we switch over to I, only got a couple um, more. I don't want to I want I don't want us two talking to be longer than the, any actual show where it's four of us. That would be pretty fun. Um, <laughs> no, I think that's pretty much all to say on Young Rock. Just if you're not watching that, that is a really fun show. Uh, kind of wholesome, maybe, uh, you know, our our listeners cup of tea. But gosh, if I can't get enough of it. Yeah, yeah really. We started talking about Girls 5 Eva and we jumped back and forth. But that was the other one that I feel like. I was super bummed to miss that conversation you guys had. Sure. Well, I mean, it's still going on. We're probably, I, I bet you we'll talk about it again once the season finale hits. Yeah, I know. That one is full of great one-liners. So you probably and have then, your chance there, yeah. And two, like, the music. Like, don't sleep on the music of the show. It's, it sounds like, it's weird. The, it is all just, like, very poppy, like, the type of thing yeah. you'd imagine. I, uh, you know. in order in editing, I got I got the full version of the theme song, the Girls Five have a theme song. Nice. And like the film music video of it, and I was like, "Fuck, this whole song slaps." Yeah. Even four stars. I really, I really like four stars. Four stars. As soon as is, I got four stars is good. The momentum isn't as good of like, as as like uh the their previous of what they're doing, but it's still a kicker. Do it's, you think though they're gonna do a momentum at the end of the season that sounds awesome? And the joke is they're gonna do the shitty versions earlier in the season. Uh, no, I think the momentum is as good as it gets, and then there's gonna be a point where they no longer have momentum, and then they will have to come up with a new song because that's how subtle the show is. Ah, uh, or it'll be like a version, but it'll be like no momentum. <laughs> yeah, they won't like, like momentum will not be able to. They won't be that. That won't be the premiere song on their album. They'll have to switch it to something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and something that speaks to their struggles. Also, Sarah Bareilles. How freaking talented is she? I'm not even talking about the music. I'm talking about as an actress. Like she is kind of the cornerstone of this show for me. Almost like the Jason Bateman to Arrested Development. I would I would say that she's like a, a protege Tina Fey. Ah, yeah, I can see keep, that. Keep keep an eye out for her. She's gonna do she's gonna do stuff. Well, she's already a super successful musician to the level, you know, she probably didn't have to do acting, which makes you realize like, oh no, she probably wanted to do this. Yeah. No, she's she's into it and it's but yeah, I, I really in, enjoy that show. Ah, so good. So good, so good. I think that's Tina Fey's husband who does the music. Yeah. Uh, don't the, quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, I think he did the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt song, too. Uh, oh. the, the king king producer of, of dumb shit songs that, that are mm-hmm. so catchy. <laughs> oh, man. I think we've made it to the end of the Kyle catch-up. Yeah. No Obi-Wan talk? Oh, I got some Obi-Wan. To- well, that's dessert. Do we want to go... That would be funny. We do the Obi Wan thumbnail. We got the dick saber in there. And we never talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we got the teases. We make this episode super long, so people gotta. <laughs> Did you? You? I don't know if you even said your piece on the fucking Boba Fett show. I can't remember. Oh, I'm I'm about there with everybody else. 
Okay. The, actually, my synopsis of Boba Fett was that if we were sitting around a campfire and you had never watched Boba Fett, I could tell you that story, and at the end of it, you'd go, "That's badass." But when sure. you see it, it's like because you'd uh, you'd you'd fill in stuff and you'd figure like I that's the like I would fix some of the stuff that they do like that they actually do how they actually tell that story. Like he wouldn't. There wouldn't every five minutes me going. So he's laying in the back to take, and he has a dream. <laughs> In the dream, <laughs> like mm-hmm. no, it would just be the shit. <laughs> I think they could have done that sequentially, like no time jumps, like literally start with him. Well, I mean, actually, they did kind of start with him, you know, becoming a, a raider. And then that might have been one of the lesser interesting stories for me. I mean, it was cool that he has that on his resume, but you know, I didn't need to see him flipping burgers to know that you know he can get get dirty. Yeah. Well, Obi Wan is now a fishmonger or whatever the fuck he's doing. Yeah, what is that stuff? We were talking about it. It's like he feeds it to his animal, so maybe it's not as valuable. Well, <laughs> like everything else on Tatooine, here's another giant fuck off monster that is just roaming the desert, I assumingly eating the other giant fuck off monsters. The ecosystem of Tatooine is so fucking insane and large. Like, why does any anyone still live there not even just choose to leave but how has a whole town not just been eaten by something yet now i don't know if the creators are doing this intentionally but in the deserts of africa they believe you know geologically speaking millions of years ago there were oceans there and they say that because they found whale bones out in the desert mm-hmm. so the idea that there would be whales out there maybe like thousands of years old petrified in the sand or something like that because like the that even that camp is in the shadow of a giant bone that looks like it could be. No, I know. think they're all recent bones. Like they 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 show yeah. recent bones of stuff, and I can only assume if it's stuff that's recently died. Because they ju- they're mm-hmm. always fighting fucking rancors in 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 sarlaccs and fucking crate dragons or whatever they are. Yeah, the uh that fish meat is that a uh. Is that like a smoking gun that they haven't shot yet? Because I feel like in the first episode of Obi Wan, they keep showing him cutting that meat up for his animal. Yeah, I thought like they, they were going to show him show, so giving that to a different character, like maybe Luke or something. But yeah, instead he gives him that toy fucking chip or whatever. Mm-hmm, the one that he has in A New Hope. Yeah, Easter egg. I'm not. I'm not sure if the fish thing is going to come back. If that, like, if he has poison glands that they're going to need, or it has a special material that they might need in the story, or something. Yeah, because there's part of me that's like, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't go back to Tatooine in this story. Oh, they're definitely going back. We can't, we can't have a Star Wars story not go to that fucking place. <laughs> I don't like the sand. <laughs> it, it's so funny how how much Vader hates sand, and yet Star Wars can't get away. From this sandy asshole of a fucking planet. So I have a, uh, I already have my first Obi Wan theory to to throw in the theory mill. Sure, uh, you ready for this? Uh, who's the character that's just been getting the you know completely inappropriate and unlawful oh, harassment? Yeah, the 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 hate or whatever. Yeah, the the new in, one of the new Inquisitors. Uh, I forget what her yeah, character name third is. Third sister. Yeah. Uh, she's got a cool name. Yeah, I guess they only call her sister. Name. Like they call her sister. Well, no, you eventually hear her name, but uh, all the other inquisitors call her third sister. But my theory is I think she's one of those kids in that opening scene in the Jedi temple. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's how you know if you're watching with a Star Wars fan or not. When the opening scene comes in and it's like night at Coruscant and you see all those younglings, that scene came up and I said, Oh shit, they're going to show this. And my wife was like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "You don't even know." These fucking pussies. <laughs> they puss they kill the ki- the people in front of them. They don't show killing the kids though. Well, you know, if she's one of those kids where this story's probably going then, she's probably a kid that Anakin saved so he could, you know, bring her up as an inquisitor or All right, I'll save you, child, but you must kill all yeah. your friends first. <laughs> yeah, I don't even Dude, like yeah. these fucking people. Hey, Timmy, here's for eating my paste. Breaks a pool cue lightsaber, tosses it at him. <laughs> it's like, I only got one spot. Or I only have one spot on my roster. We're going to have tryouts, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I liked that scene of showing 
CG versus real, like the stormtroopers they have there or the clone troopers, you can tell that they're in actual yes. armor. They're actually that, there. That's that was exciting. I like I liked it so much. I was like, have I never seen a clone in live action, a clone trooper in live action in live action have. armor? Because that felt different. It felt neat. Like I I think they were all computer generated. Like I think in one of the behind the scenes. I, I, like, I thought I, I, I thought to myself they couldn't all be computer generated in the trilogy. Like I must have seen one actually have an actual costume, right? But now that I'm thinking about it, like th- it felt really tactile and real in this scene for whatever reason. You know, I imagine that uh Morris Boba Fett, uh, I forget the actor's name, Tamara Morrison. Mm-hmm. I imagine he was wearing a costume, then they digitized him. So it's like a digital rendering of the costume that he made. So it's still a digital model that they're they're doing stuff with. Like, I don't, I don't think there was a lot of scenes. I mean, there's like him sitting in the cafeteria where they obviously composited him. You know, like a yeah. million of him eating and stuff. Well, like there's that. the the one in in here where they don't support. We don't. We just don't support our clone veterans. Oh, there's a theory out online like that that guy recognized Obi Wan. But Obi Wan was nice to him, so that's why he didn't say anything. wasn't a prick about it. Well, I, my last mi- my last mission I remember is to kill all you motherfuckers. But I guess you gave me some you you gave me enough money for a meal. You're cool, Jedi. Well, no, he was probably one of the fucked up ones. Like they probably didn't all go Order sixty six. There was a few of them where the chip malfunction kind of. You like mean the, the bad wrecked. batch? They made a whole show about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Duh. Like yeah. There was probably more bad batch guys. He's probably one of them. Down and oh, out. Oh man, that's uh, they, they really are the bad batch. They have hard times there. <laughs> oh man, talking about another good Star Wars show. The I don't know if I'm crazy about the spinny lightsaber thing. I know that they had yeah. those in Rebels, and I was like, ah. Uh, I think they're in the video game too, um, the Fallen Order. And I think that as long as they don't use it to like spin above their heads and fly, I think that's stupid. But <laughs> like Thor, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, I like the I liked that Obi Wan straight up just shoves that Jedi to the side of like it just gives him the cold shoulder and gets that Jedi killed. Yeah. Hey, dude, you gotta help me out. I'm gonna die. Like. <laughs> Yeah, too bad. Like the Jedi are done, except for the fact that I'm literally Watching waiting one. around to train the last Jedi. So th- there's there's still that push and pull of the original trilogy and the the prequels of like because Ewan McGregor is like, oh well, the Jedi Order is done. I can't help you. I'm like, your whole thing is to sit here and train this other fucking Jedi. The Jedi Order is not dead. You're trying to preserve it. Fuck you! Your dialogue is always conflicting. Yeah, I honestly think a sequence change. Like if Obi Wan would have had that talk with him before he went to the cantina and started like helping guys and stuff, because yeah. that's what they were trying to say. Like Jedi's hunt themselves. Uh, you know, this guy's just gonna go do good. So all we have to do is follow him. He's looking for other Jedi's. Well, that's I, I like that you have to real like the only reason Obi Wan has survived is that. He hasn't helped to people. He stopped helping yep. people. That's kind of badass, honestly. That's a good. That's a good story development thing there too. But you have to keep committing to it and not have him try to help out this other fucking kid that and develop fucking Jedi powers. <laughs> when it's when it's he's trying to not be caught for being a Force wizard, and yet you're teaching Force. You want to teach Force wizardry something awful to this other this other young kid. <laughs> I wonder how much of that though is like shit. That's Anakin Skywalker's kid, man. He's gonna have force oozing out of him. Well, yeah, and we we saw how well it worked out for Anakin. I don't know. I feel like I think like the only Star Wars movie I've liked since the original trilogy was Rise of Skywalker, and it's specifically because uh, Luke said that the Jedi are stupid and they've always done everything wrong. <laughs> And we should do something completely different because everything they did was completely fucked up. Man, Rise of Skywalker was a weird movie. <laughs> Any other? Like, I kill, uh, kill not. Damn it! How do you, how do you do? Say his name, Kill Nanjiani. Kamel, yeah. Kamel Nanjiani, yeah. He, he, he's his fake Jedi. Gosh. is kind of fun. Okay. I also love what was that a quadruple cross? Like they did that yeah. whole thing where 
by the end you're like is he a good guy well he's he's a piece of shit but then suddenly he he sees force powers he sees mm-hmm. like magic and of course if if Unlike the original trilogy, I'm like, okay, you were young enough, or oh, I'm sorry, old enough to definitely remember Jedi's everywhere on Coruscant. It's like so that this magic wouldn't be special to you. But if you were, if you, if it was the original trilogy type of like where Jedi are a dead religion and people don't even believe they exist anymore, suddenly that's like, oh shit, he's he's a real fucking Jedi. Oh my god, that would sell a lot better. But again, we can't get away from prequel stuff. Like so, yeah. It is so interesting that, and I apologize again for calling her third sister, but it is so interesting that when that character is on the hunt, you know, she seems to be fine with, like, taking out bystanders, you know? Um, But when she's presented with... One would say pretty overzealous about it. Yeah. Um, But she gets to Kamal and just leaves him. (laughs) Like, and he's even, like, smart enough. Well, I think think there's a level of threat of, like, what are you doing? What you... <laughs> get kind of get ridiculous, out of kid. Get out yeah. of here. <laughs> get, just shoot. What's shoot. the bounty up on me? <laughs> like that whole <laughs> just... bit was so good with him. Yeah, the other inquisitor. Uh, the other inquisitors are like, "Calm down, girl. Damn. Like we're evil, funny. sure, but like we're trying to like you know <laughs> run a fucking system here. <laughs> <laughs> Got monsters ink going on in this movie. People, this people show. need their hands for that. God." Yeah, this freaking, they are real comfortable with maiming people's limbs. Like, oh, yeah. I guess she's going to get a robot hand, but. Well, uh, when you have a whole movie series whose combat is based around laser swords that can cut through anything, people are going to get <laughs> chopped up pretty good. Oh, that's so uh, so true. Vader always made sense to me of like, oh, that's what happens when you survive a bunch of lightsaber fights. You become mostly a machine. Yeah, that's actually why my favorite of the uh, the newer movies is The Force Awakens and specifically that third act where they're fighting with the lightsabers, but like two of them don't really know how to use it. So they're yeah. getting just maimed. And I'm like, yes, this is how a lightsaber fight would go down. Like people be messing up and like nicking. Well, themselves. that scene with the Mandalorian where he takes a, a chunk out of his own yeah. fucking leg. Yeah. Oh, that's another great one. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, damn. These things are s- man. Yeah. <laughs> Force powers mm-hmm. make, like, merely make these look a lot easier. These are real dangerous. Oh, this dumbass made a lightsaber where it's essentially a prop hilt. And then he has a piece of rod iron going up. And what it does is it heats the rod iron to molting hot. So it looks like a lightsaber. But you can just see this guy like, ah, it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, genius. Burning my I hand. It is hot. <laughs> get, get my gloves. <laughs> my Jedi gloves. <laughs> it's also super heavy like that dark saber like ugh. well uh Ooh. kyle that was a long long time ago in a galaxy far far away for that talk uh oh. hopefully you can join us uh next week or, or coming up here so we can talk some more of the shows you we've got coming down the pike because we got some good stuff going on i suppose now oh, is yeah. a good a time as any to mention the patreon since i forgot to mention it anywhere else on the fucking episode <laughs> but if you want to go to patreon and, and support the tv dudes you can totally do that throw us a couple bucks an episode uh helps you know keep up streaming services and, and this pay for costs and stuff uh it gives you access to a bunch of different stuff like a bunch of star wars content that uh these guys have recorded before you know we also did the racist episode of Seinfeld years ago. Or no, no, no. The 9-11 episode of Seinfeld. We, uh, <laughs> I was going to say we the all racist characters episode read of Seinfeld. The script. We just read out There's... the script of, of, of what's his name from... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Um, Kramer? <laughs> Kramer. Like, it just uh, had the laugh in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, if you dig through the Patreon archives, you'll find it. Uh, yeah, and you can get access to the Patreon, like... Uh, 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 the Nick Cage marathon we're doing right now, or what's going to mm-hmm. go up this week, which is the first episode of D and Dudes, which is our D and D campaign made up of all TV characters, including uh, Les's Laszlo, better known as Jackie Faye Tona, <laughs> Randy's hardboiled detective from ta- from Terriers, uh, I believe is Hank, and of course. 
what was the name of your character again, Kyle? Uh, it's it's beautiful, yet I keep mispronouncing it. Yeah, I uh Joe Zytotic. Joe Yeah Joe Zydeco. Joe, Joe, I'm sorry. Joe, Joe Zydeco. Zydeco. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Joe, Joe Exotic's uh, uh second cousin or whatever. Yeah, it's his twin brother. So after Joe Exotic goes to jail, his twin brother shows up in classic TV fashion, Joe sure. Zydeco. Yeah, but he's got all the same tiger, uh, you know, luring young boys powers that his brother does. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I don't like that luring young boys was a power there. Also, another one of my powers is my tiger pouch, where I just have like a, a limited supply of baby tigers that I can barter with. I believe we call I believe we christened it a tiger oh. hole, but yeah, sure, I guess hole. you could try and call it a tiger pouch. <laughs> no, it's a tiger hole. I got also, you wrong. can throw in at the $20 level and become a showrunner. And just pick a for us a show for a watch, like uh, a bunch of people have for a bunch of anime that we still have not watched or done any mm-hmm. shows on. Uh, I think there's a couple in there that aren't even anime. We're kind of behind on that, but we'll see. So if you request something that's not anime, you might actually get ahead of those guys. No, I mean, there's a couple. Knows? There's a couple things that aren't anime, and we're still we didn't even cover those things either. <laughs> we got a backlog. We're getting there. We're just gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> and we push back a bunch of shows this week since people they didn't want to talk about. Uh, Shorzy or Obi Wan shows them. Yep. Oh. Anyway, thank you, Kyle. Yeah, thank you, Nick. This has been a, this has been a blast. I'm excited about the episodes we got coming up, and I'm really excited about this Patreon. I'm not uh, I'm not joking. That was a lot of fun to record. Oh sure, it was a it was a bitch to edit, but uh... oh, I could tell <laughs> while we were doing it. Oh. <laughs> But uh, until next time, TV Dudes out. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast out of Austin, Texas. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is done by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com. I'm Randy Lander. I'm Les Weiler. And I'm Kyle Scott. Thanks for listening. <laughs>